Hi, and welcome back to SDRTK. Today, I have another headphone review for you. It's the Sennheiser HD 200 Pros. Let's check them out. And for those that have seen my headphone reviews before, you know that I'm not going to sit here and say, these are great, best thing ever, you got to get them. Headphone reviews are difficult enough to make meaningful for you to watch, and that for sure isn't going to help you out. Now, I've already opened up these headphones and had music playing through them for 24 hours, just in case there's any sonic difference as they get run in. But I'm going to go ahead and turn back the clock. I will unbox them for you. Then we're going to get into some audio tests, and we're going to use a sine wave sweep from 20 to 20,000 hertz. We're going to use music and spoken word, and we're going to compare the frequency response of original direct recordings versus recordings made through the HD 200 Pros. We'll look at both linear and logarithmic examples and more on that later. After that, I'll do a quick run through on the specs for these, and then I'll go ahead and look at the build quality. I'll give you an idea of what I think of the build quality. Comfort again, I'll tell you how they fit me. That may be different for you. And finally, I'll give you a few thoughts and recommendations. But again, there's going to be none of these are great. You got to get them. All right, so let's go ahead and unbox these headphones. And they come in some nice packaging, as you would expect from a company like Sennheiser. I'll go ahead and uh, slice them open. There's a security tab, just so you can know for sure that they haven't been opened before. And we'll go ahead and slide it out. Got looks like a plastic molded insert inside. Uh, I like to see a lot of times something that's biodegradable, but nonetheless, this will protect the headphones as they uh, get to you. Uh, pretty lightweight uh, first impression here as I'm actually taking them out of the package. Go ahead and pull the headphones out. Cable uh, is uh, pre-attached on these headphones. It uh, looks quite long though, so there shouldn't be any problem with length here. I see there was also an adapter for quarter inch included there. Um, headphones are really plasticky. There's a lot of plastic material here. Uh, do swivel both directions, uh, top to bottom, back and forth. Uh, yeah, cable doesn't appear to come out at all. Uh, has an eighth inch jack. Um, nothing really too special about them, but these are an affordable headphone. Now the HD 200s are a closed back headphone design. And so if you're in a room that has other noise, like a computer or such, and you want to isolate the sound from that, that can be a good design for you. And I can tell you that they are very lightweight first putting them on, but more on the build quality later. And I think it's challenging to get meaningful information about the audio performance of headphones across in a review. I mean, it is very subjective after all. So, I mean, what I like to do is use frequency response graphs. That way I can show you the difference between the original sound and the sound recorded through, in this case, the HD 200s. And you can look for areas that are overemphasized or missing. And that way, I think at least you can have some idea of what to expect. So let's get right to it with the audio tests. For the first test, we're going to take a look at a sine wave sweep, 20 to 20,000 hertz. First, we'll record it directly from the generator into the Scarlett 8i6. We'll take a look at the frequency. Then we'll go ahead and play that same sine sweep through the HD 200 Pros. We'll record that using the AKG P170 and take a look at the frequency response we get there. So first up, directly into the 8i6, the sine wave sweep. Now let's take a look at a recording of a sine wave sweep from 20 to 20,000 hertz through the HD 200 Pros using the AKG P170. So first we'll take a look at the comparison of the sine wave using a linear format. A linear format is exactly that. It is simply each frequency one after the other. And you can see here that the original sine wave has a pretty even amplitude across the frequency range, whereas recorded through the headphones, we're missing some area kind of in the mids and definitely missing some high frequency response. And I can tell you, I did experience that to some extent wearing the headphones myself. I've switched over to a different pair now that I know for monitoring so I can get a better idea, you know, of what the sound is actually like when I listen back to it. But uh, definitely you can, you can see it in the linear response. Now I'll go ahead and pull up the logarithmic comparison. And now you're looking at the log comparison of the sine wave sweep. And a log comparison is meant to give you a better representation of how we hear things. Because there's a difference between the actual response of any speaker or headphones and the way our ears perceive them. 
And you can see here that we are still missing some information in the mids and highs. So you may get from that that you can expect a little less emphasis there, maybe a little less clarity. It's not going to be presence forward. But uh, we'll, we'll get more into that with the music tests and with the spoken word tests as well. But uh, suffice to say, there is some missing information here looking at the sign sweep. For the second test, we'll compare original music recorded through the Scarlett 8i6 against the music played through the HD200 Pros recorded on the AKG P170. So first, let's take a look at the frequency response of the original music. Now let's take a look at the music recorded through the HD 200 Pros using the AKG P170. And now you're looking at a linear comparison of music first directly into the 8i6 and then recorded through the HD 200s. And you can see that the bass response is pretty much all there, but there's definitely a lot of information, a lot of sound missing in the mid and high range. And you know, there's a big difference when we play music that has all frequencies coming through at the same time versus a sign sweep where really the headphones only have to produce one tone at a time. And so there's obviously an impact here on the higher range sounds when these headphones have to produce the full range. And so based on this, you would expect to have, uh, you know, kind of, again, a lower sound, very bass forward, not too much in the highs. But let's pull up the log comparison and see how that looks. And so now, again, we're looking at the log comparison of music recorded directly into the 8i6 versus through the HD 200 Pros. And again, we can see that our perception is also going to be of missing information, of missing highs and mid ranges. It doesn't look quite as severe in the log impression versus the linear actual response. But nonetheless, looking at this, you can expect that if you're going to listen to music, it's going to be very bass forward with these headphones and it'll be lacking some of the high response. And for the third test, we'll take a look at a sample dialogue. First, I have it recorded directly into the Scarlett 8i6. So we'll take a look at the frequency response for that. And then we'll go ahead and play that back through the HD 200s recording on the AKG P170. And we'll take a look at the frequency response there. So again, let's take a listen to the original recording into the 8i6. This is a sample dialogue recording to test the Sennheiser HD 200 Pros. Now let's take a look at a sample dialogue recording through the HD 200 Pros using the AKG P170. This is a sample dialogue recording to test the Sennheiser HD 200 Pros. And now we're looking at the linear frequency comparison for spoken word directly into the 8i6 versus recorded through the HD 200 Pros. And again, you can see we're missing some high information here. When we're speaking, we actually have quite a number of tones and harmonics coming through, which again can have an impact on the headphones ability to provide information to reproduce all of the frequencies. And again, here we can see pretty much all of the low end. It's pretty much high end that is missing. And so again, you can expect a spoken word to sound very low, very bassy, possibly a little bit muffled through these headphones. Let's uh, again, go ahead and load up the log profiles and take a look. And finally, looking at the log comparison, you can see that the reproduction between the direct and recordings through the HD 200 Pros are pretty faithful in the low end but our perception of the sound in the high end and the mids definitely is going to be lower than what the, uh, the original was. And that again can mean that our voice won't sound as bright, won't have the same air to it. So um, you need to be aware of that if you're getting these headphones, that they are very bass forward. 
and uh, really have what I would say is underemphasized mids and trebles. I'm going to take a quick look at the build quality on these headphones. As I said, when I unboxed them, everything here is basically plastic. I mean, it has a lot of flexibility, so I don't know that they're going to break on you, but there's nothing metal. Even the, the sides when we slide them open, everything is just plastic in here. Has some nice padding on the top. That was comfortable. The ear padding actually was all right too. I didn't find them uncomfortable to wear. Um, that does have a lot of articulation. So, I mean, they're going to fit you. Headphone cups aren't overly large. So depending on how big your ears are, you may find that the edges of your ears are touching with the cup. So you need to be aware of that. Uh, again, cable is not replaceable on this from what I can tell. It doesn't unplug from here. Certainly nothing that I can see and I don't want to try and force it. Uh, so, I mean, in terms of that, the average build quality, uh, basically, you know, a headphone in this price range, uh, you know, they're under $100. Uh, Sennheiser, I have high expectations of. If you've seen my uh, Sennheiser XS1 microphone review video, I was just blown away by how good an inexpensive microphone from Sennheiser was. These headphones perform a little more on the average end of things. So my final thoughts on these headphones, who are they for? Well, first of all, these headphones I wouldn't recommend for mixing or for mastering. They simply don't have an even enough frequency response across all ranges. You know, we like to say that you can learn your headphones, but I think this has a little bit too much missing information up in the high range. Now for general listening, yes. I mean, if you like especially a very bass forward sound, these could be for you. Uh, they also could be all right for gaming. Like I say, they're quite comfortable to wear. Uh, expect again that some of the high frequencies may not be uh, as apparent. So depending on uh, what game you're playing, that uh, may, may or may not translate the way you want it to. But uh, again, price, comfort, I mean, uh, they seem to be reasonable. Not uh, certainly a high-end headphone and again, uh, not for audio production. I like to provide as much information as I can about headphones without you actually being able to try them on. And hopefully the way I looked at these headphones gives you an idea of what to expect if you're considering purchasing a pair of HD 200 Pros. If you're into microphones and audio gear, streaming, recording, production, check out one of the other videos on the screen. And if you got some value here, think about smashing the like button. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.